Saturday, October 29th, 2022, Maneco 64, home of Alternative Economics and Contrarian Views. Today, we're going to look at the diesel situation in the U.S., uh, the diesel crisis. Uh, there seems to be a, a shortage of diesel, and we're going to look at why it could be very significant for the U.S. economy and also for the whole of the uh, the world uh, economy because uh, a, a crisis in the U.S. would affect the whole world. Uh, before I start, I'd like to say we, we didn't do the Mike and Mario show uh, yesterday evening. Uh, Mike uh, wasn't available. So, yeah, there is no Mike and Mario show uh, being posted uh, today. I usually post it uh, uh, on my channel on Saturday morning. Yesterday I spent <laughs> most of the afternoon playing golf and then my wife and I went out for dinner. So I didn't really watch the markets too much. Um, yeah, I hadn't played golf <laughs> for almost a month because we went away for a week to Madeira and then I came back. I, I had a bad cold but uh, actually, I played really well, and, and it was a match play uh, round against someone else. And I won four, four and two, which means I was four holes up with two holes to play. Uh, that's how match play works. So we, we didn't have to play the last two holes because I won on the uh, 16th. Uh, maybe uh, I didn't expect too much, and I was quite relaxed. That's Sometimes it helps. Anyway... I've been hearing a little bit about the diesel situation for the last week, maybe a little longer, but it seems to be getting quite pronounced now. You have people like Infowars, for example, warning diesel crisis could soon crash entire U.S. economy. It sounds quite alarming, but we're going to look at it because... I think they might have a point with that headline. Uh, we've got Bloomberg. Uh, the U.S. diesel uh, crisis is here and it's spreading along the East Coast. Prices spike in areas with, with delivery delays and truck shortage. Supplier requires 72-hour notice for fuel delivery in Southeast. Uh, there's a video here from WFLA News Channel. Diesel shortage as prices per gallon soars. I think in Florida, the average is a, around $5.20 per gallon, which is very high. Um, before uh, we go into why I think this is happening, not, and not just me, we're going to also reference Rafi Faber and his uh, Endgame Investor uh, newsletter, which I recommend. Um, you subscribe to because he writes some really interesting things so i'll reference that and i'm also gonna talk about backwardation uh, and the commodity uh, markets futures markets i'm gonna reference you as well to an article about backwardation not just in commodities uh, but also in the monetary commodities in particular gold and also silver so, I thought it would be interesting uh, to go through uh, this article I found here. And this is from May 1st, 2022. And people were already concerned about what was going on in the diesel market. And it says, why every American should care that diesel prices are surging across the country. And for every American, I would say everyone around the industrial world, the Western Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, the major countries. So let's go through this article. It's not that long, but it, it will help you understand why it's so important and why even InfoWars, uh, the InfoWars headline might have a point. It says here, gasoline prices are increasing almost daily. Pinching the wallets and pocketbooks of nearly all Americans with cars. However, 
As bad as that news is, diesel prices are surging even more across the country. Today's truck stop retail diesel prices hit a new record of $5.32 per gallon. So we're still above five, uh, at least in Florida right now. Uh, since February 1st, uh, national truck stop diesel prices have increased by $1.57 per gallon. And don't forget, this is from, from May. For an owner operator whose truck gets 5.6 five miles per gallon this equates to a cost increase of 24 cents per mile diesel's importance to our economy again this is a, this applies to the whole of western europe and the more modern industrial world if you want to call it that to many americans including politicians diesel prices are so removed from their version of reality that they often dismiss the importance of a diesel to, to the US and global economies. However, diesel is the fuel that drives the economy and leaves major industries vulnerable to cost shocks. Without diesel fuel, the US economy would collapse in a matter of days. So, yeah, it's serious. Our supply chains would completely shrivel uh, almost overnight. Trucks use it to haul our goods across the country. Of all Class 8 trucks, the big ones, 97% use diesel. No, Elon Musk is not going to save us here. When Tesla announced uh, the semi in 2017, Musk projected that over 100,000 would be uh, produced by 2022. Today, there are less than 20, mostly prototypes. Uh, trains also depend on diesel to transport products products across the country. Almost every train in the country depends on diesel for energy. Even a large portion of our electricity is indirectly powered by diesel. Over one-fifth, 22% uh, of our electricity in the United States come, comes from coal. Diesel-powered trains transport coal to power plants across the nation. Uh, diesel is also critical to our imports and exports because 80% of the ships that transport, transport products via the ocean are powered by diesel. A world without diesel would mean that our grocery stores and restaurants would run out of food, retail store shelves would be empty, and hospitals would run out of medical supplies. But that is uh, just scratching the surface. Uh, diesel's importance to agriculture. Farmers use diesel to power most of their machinery. According to Diesel Technology Forum, diesel is critical to the farming industry. One reason why U.S. agriculture is among the most productive and economically valuable in the world, producing more yield in less time with fewer inputs, is thanks to the advancements in the machines and equipment uh, that do uh, the planting, harvesting, and tending to the land. Today, diesel engines power the majority of agricultural equipment in the U.S. and around the world necessary to plant cultivate and harvest crops and transport them to markets or for processing uh, and then delivered ultimately to the consumer. Diesel engines power more than two thirds of all farm equipment, uh, transport 90% of its uh, product and pump one fifth of its water in the United States. 96% of the large trucks that move agricultural commodities to railheads and warehouses are powered by diesel engine. 100% of the freight locomotives, marine river grain barges and ocean going vessels that deliver these products to markets at home and abroad are powered by diesel. Yes, 100% it said. Uh, in the agriculture sector, there is no cost effective substitute for diesel engines with the same co combination of energy efficiency, power and performance, durability and reliability. Diesel dominates 
the entire farm supply chain, planting uh, the product, tending the crop, watering fertilizers and pesticides, harvesting the product, and even bringing the product to market by truck, rail, or ship. Farm tractors combines uh, irrigation pumps and other equipment are the workhorses in an industry vital to our national economy and quality of life. Nearly every uh, fishing vessel around the world uses diesel power, diesel for power. Uh, without diesel, our fishing uh, food supply chain would collapse. Uh, diesel's importance to the industrial sector. Diesel also powers the construction industry uh, from the Diesel Technology Forum. Roughly 850,000 diesel-powered vehicles nationwide are in use bringing supplies, materials, and workers to and from U.S. construction sites. Earth movers, uh, bulldozers, bucket loaders, uh, backhoes, cranes, uh, pavers, excavators, and motor graders are all essential to building and expanding our economic infrastructure. For most of these machines, there's simply no substitute for diesel power. No viable alternative has yet emerged for equipment that exceeds 500 horsepower. Some construction engines produce several thousand horsepower. Since diesel powers the in industrial economy, the recent surges in prices will put additional inflationary pressures on the US economy. In the sectors that have already experienced unprecedented inflation, transportation, agriculture, and construction. But this may be less damaging than demand destruction that may come along with price surges, especially in transportation and construction. <laughs> so yeah, this was long, but hopefully it gave you an idea of how important diesel is. I mean, I had never thought about it <laughs> until now, and it seems to be getting worse and worse. So what is happening? So now let's see uh, what uh, people like Rafi Faber, for example, think is happening in the diesel market. And then I'll give you my opinion as well. And we're going to then look at uh, backwardation as well. Uh, the article that I will recommend that you read so you, you learn about what it really is. Uh, diesel crunch from prolonged backwardation. That's what Rafi says in his uh, publication from yesterday. So let's read through uh, this um, article here, the diesel part. It says 25 days of diesel left with backwardation ongoing for two years, finally taking its toll. No diesel means uh, the prices of everything go up fast for lack of transportation. So if you read the article that I'm going to recommend, I'll recommend it right now. So it's by Professor uh, Antal Fekety. He's, he's passed on, unfortunately, but he, he wrote about the dangers of permanent gold backwardation. And it's not just about gold. It's about what backwardation is. It's about the commodity futures markets and how backwardation uh, works. And uh, if you read this article, you understand why having a backwardation for two years, like Rafi is talking about, is very unusual. And why is that? Well, because uh, backwardation leads to more supplies coming into the market because what it means is that the, the spot or cash price is higher than the future price. So uh, people will normally, when there is backwardation in commodities, they will sell for cash. They'll get $100 and then buy in the future for 95 and they'll pocket the $5 difference. But they're not doing that uh, in the diesel market. So let's see what Rafi thinks. Uh, diesel fuel almost out, prolonged backwardation finally taking its toll. And another potential trigger, the Energy Information Administration, the EIA, is reporting that the U.S. only has about 25 days of supply of diesel fuel left. 
Diesel futures have been in backwardation for nearly two years, and this incentivizes delivery and disincentivizes storing. If prices are more expensive in the present, you want to sell now rather than later when prices are cheaper. So you will sell now and not store for the future in order to alleviate what looks like a, a shortage. But in reality, it's really just the money substitute dollar dying in this case. So what does Rafi mean <laughs> about the money substitute dollar? Well, Rafi and I see gold and silver as money. And uh, normally, as I said, if there's backwardation, people will sell and then pocket the profit from the future. But the fact that they're not selling is that they don't want the other side of the trade. What's the other side of the trade in diesel? Well, it's the US dollar. That's what Rafi thinks. I tend to agree with him. And again, uh, I highly rececommend uh, the Endgame Investor uh, newsletter. I, I think it's about just over $200 a year, and I think it's worth it. I'll put a link uh, below in the description for it. So uh, let's see here what the uh, EIA said. On the basis of the most recent information available, from monthly surveys conducted by the EIA, stocks had already decreased to 113 million barrels by the end of July, the lowest level since 1996 and before that, 1954. However, in terms of consumption, stockpiles were just 30 days worth of demand at the end of July, the lowest seasonal level in monthly records dating back to 1945. Since then, the inventory situation has become even more precarious. In October, stockpiles are thought to have reached a record seasonal low of only 25 days of supply. This is the lowest level since 2008. The northeast to southeast diesel shortfall that last week alarmed the White House is forcing at least one supplier to implement emergency procedures. Uh, as winter approaches, diesel inventories nationally are at their lowest seasonal level ever. And certain regions in the Northeast have started fuel rationing. The scarcity will almost certainly result in higher heating and transportation fuel costs, further taxing household finances. And Rafi... Uh, uh, took a part of an article from the Washington, Washington Post. It says, Washington Post explains uh, what this has to do with backwardation. In October, the diesel curve had become so backward dated that sellers risk, risk losing as much as uh, 30 to 40 cents a gallon holding onto product until the next month compared with less than one cent at the same time last year. So it's pretty bad, the backwardation. Uh, not only was the spread unusually large, but the backwardation uh, had lasted unusually long. Typically, the diesel market flips into contango. That's the opposite of backwardation. And you will learn about that when you read that article I've recommended in the summer, allowing suppliers to replenish fuel ahead of peak harvest and heating season. This year, uh, that never happened. Backwardation is also extreme in Europe, which is having the same problems. Uh, the market for diesel type fuel in Northwest Europe is also extremely tight with stockpiles forecast to hit their lowest since uh, at least 2011 this winter. Like in the U.S., the region's diesel futures market is also extremely backward dated uh, with November de delivery products at a more than $70 uh, dollars per ton premium to December on Thursday. So this is what Rafi thinks. Uh, the mainstream will not make the connection between the dying dollar and backwardation. <laughs> it's not that they're trying to hide anything as much as they just don't get it. But of course, if they did get it, they'd hide it anyway. Uh, and he continues, Rafi, he says, 
they will say it's just a temporary supply supply problem, but it's really a dollar problem exp expressing itself as a diesel problem. This can get very confusing, admittedly, on a forex basis, meaning relative to other currencies. The dollar is in heavy demand, but that's only a relative to other currencies, not relative to actual goods. Uh, right now, gold is acting as a currency rather than money itself, which is a good, not a currency, because when traders trade gold on a forex basis, they're trading gold derivatives. That changes when the supply of physical backing the derivatives is depleted and we are heading down in that supply every week now. Yeah, especially silver. Um, and um, with that, uh, I just wanted to show you here, just uh, show you the uh, situation for one of the uh, diesel futures contract. It's on the CME group or NYMEX. It's the New York Harbor UL, ULSD. And you can see here uh, the backwardation, the last price for the November contract, which is the spot contract, was 444, December 372. Uh, so it keeps going down. It should be the other way around. Uh, the near contract should be have the lowest price and the further ones out should have uh, the higher, higher price. Um, and why is that? Well, because uh, agricultural commodities or energy uh, products, you have to store them. And to keep them uh, stored for months, it costs. And that's why you usually have a contango in the futures curve. Yes, there is backwardation in agricultural and even uh, in energy commodities, but they don't last that long. But <laughs> the fact that it's, this has been going on for two years is a bad sign. I would say for the dollar, uh, like Rafi said. So, so here's the article. Yeah. So I've told you about this article already, but make sure you read this to understand what's going on. And what does permanent gold backwardation mean? Well, it, it means that um, this will be the day that the dollar dies because it means no one wants dollars. <laughs> uh, the dollar will not even buy a grain of gold. That's what Professor Fekety says in the article, and it's a long article, but you need to read it. So yes, there has been backwardation in gold and silver in the last 10, 12 years. And, and I would say right now, uh, silver is in backwardation because um, the spot price for real physical silver is a lot higher than the futures prices. And I think that's a signal that uh, gold could be next. Uh, but what does permanent mean? Well, it means that uh, people will not sell for cash, gold for cash, sell you know, gold for cash and then buy it in the future for less to pocket the difference. And why is that? Well, because they don't want the dollar anymore. And that's when when the system will be in trouble, when there's permanent uh, backwardation in the gold market. And it looks like we have permanent backwardation in the diesel market. And the diesel market, as you saw, <laughs> is uh, so important, or diesel energy is so important for, for every uh, modern economy, wherever it may be, not just the US. So, yeah, we're going to keep an eye on this. It, it looks serious. I, I don't think InfoWars was uh, being alarmist. They do have a point. Uh, what could uh, be done to solve this problem? Well, <laughs> I saw a headline that uh, apparently the uh, U.S. administration uh, or Democrats are thinking about nationalizing uh, the energy sector. I mean, this would be extreme. It, it, they have to use uh, maybe wartime economy laws or acts to take over. <laughs> uh, so it, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't uh, feel like a, an economy or a currency uh, that is doing doing great. Of course, as Rafi said, they're going to blame uh, COVID. <laughs> when the supply chains were disrupted, they're going to blame Putin, of course. 
and the war in the Ukraine. But I, I think it's much deeper than that. It's a dollar problem. So there you go. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this uh, report or video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. And uh, think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And I wish you all a, a great rest of the weekend. Take care. Bye.